evening, Mr. Narayanan. Thank you for making time and coming to Bombay from Delhi. Uh, we're starting the session a little late, so my apologies. Uh, please give Mr. Narayanan a big round of applause. He was also the chairman of our jury for the uh, IDMA Awards. He gave time, he gave his name, and uh, we split the jury in two in Delhi and Bombay, but he was the chairman of the overall jury, so thank you for that. Uh, You came back to India in 2015. You took charge of Nestle India. Since then, it has just galloped. You were able to turn around Nestle, steady Nestle, be consistent. And at that time, early in 2015, the moment you arrived, you had to deal with a challenge, which you successfully surmounted. Uh, there was an issue with one of the major brands. And today, Nestle India is a almost 260000 crore market cap i checked in the morning it was more than 250000 crores uh, market cap uh, it's a company that is growing uh, there has been consistent leadership what helped you do that i know our session is about purpose but i want to find a segue into purpose that's why i'm asking 9 years in counting growth in counting consistency in counting what made you do what you did. Thank you. Thank you, Anurag, for uh, having me here today. And, uh, you know, I was just reminiscing uh, as I was listening to the, some of the speakers. Uh, in an age of bullshit jobs and uh, technology, uh, I think purpose takes on even more meaning. And uh, I think one of the, you know, if I were to, and pardon my being very non tech, because I'm not a very tech guy. Uh, and still believe in some of the old school values that have uh, brought us up. And one of the fundamental of that is that uh, come hail, come sunshine, uh, there has to be something that drives you as a human being. And that something is called a purpose. Something is called a value. Something is called a behavior. Something is called a something that you put as your North Star that you will not allow it to be violated uh, under any circumstances. So I think uh, what faced me at that time was, you know, and people attributed a uh, lot to my leadership. I think it's an exaggeration. I would say that what was important was the ethos and purpose of the team. And the team fundamentally belonged to an organization where respect was at the center and because respect was so important to us respect for ourselves respect for each other respect for diversity respect for the future and an overall value system where decency humility honesty and ethics mattered uh, i think these are the these are the the combination of of purpose and values uh, that helped me keep my own sanity and also uh, formed the bridge of communication with my uh, team in terms of authenticity and transparency on what we needed to do as an organization. So, you know, uh, again, uh, you were born in Bangalore, you studied in Delhi. Uh, not many people know that you got through into IS, right? I didn't. I would have you, aspired you, to. <laughs> you aspired, sorry, you aspired to get into the IS. You didn't, and now a career uh, of almost four decades. Yeah. Is, and you <clears throat> did work for Lewis too in the early part of your career. How do you define? I'll come to Nestle's purpose and the brand. How do you define the purpose of your own life? See, I, you know, if I can. I, I, I defined for myself my own purpose uh, when I first uh, took a job and uh, worked under a very difficult circumstance uh, that I had to actually shut down a factory. My first assignment was shutting down a plant and when you are 21, 22 years old, if that's your assignment, it's a pretty grim start. You know? uh, it wasn't a bullshit job, it was very much a job that had to be done. Uh, but I said to myself, I said, if I can come out of this and create a positive impact on people, 
that should be my life mission as something that I would like to do and always trying to make an impact positively on, on people by being on their side and not being in front of them. That has always been the way I have looked at leadership. Uh, it's called in modern day parlance uh, servant leadership <clears throat> which is where uh, you seek to serve rather than be served. Uh, I think I found this to be hugely satisfying, hugely enriching. And as I today <coughs> face the evening of my career, I realize that uh, the good wishes and goodwill and the gratitude of hundreds and thousands of people whom I've had the privilege of interacting is probably far more than the value that I have created for organizations or that 2,60,000 crores that you, uh, that you talked about. I mean, those are, all, those are all facts and numbers, but I think in this age, and, and, and this is where I really appeal to the young people, in this age where technology is becoming a threat, guys, human beings cannot be a threat to themselves. And I think that's something that I would like to, you to reflect upon. If you allow yourself to become a threat to yourself and to others, uh, then I think you have a, a bigger crisis on your hands rather than AI trying to eat up a couple of jobs or a couple of uh, professions. And you know, I'll come to the purpose of, the, of a company of Nestle, of brands, and how can purpose be brought to action? How do you define purpose? How do you measure that you're doing well on the purpose that you <coughs> set out on? But let me build on what you said. You said a person becomes a threat to himself or herself or to your... Why don't you build on that? You're obviously referring to certain kind of behaviors or the focus on oneself first, you know. You know, I think uh, you realize, especially, especially in a crisis, and I, have, I don't know by the blessing of uh, God or by the hand of fate, I have had numerous crises to, to deal with. So I have kind of, I have become a, 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 a much hurt soldier in all that I have been through. And one of the, the core realizations that has dawned on me after many years is that managing yourself is more than half the problem in dealing with a crisis. I think as leaders, uh, we fail to deal with ourselves. Uh, when there is, when the Maggie crisis happened or when any of the other things, when COVID happened, for example, I was cut off from my team for extended periods of time. And it was very difficult because you were to, expected to lead an organization of eight, 9,000 people with no idea whether you will be alive tomorrow or not. I mean, the disease was so virulent, it could have killed anyone. And yet you have to provide hope, support, and uh, you know, a future prospect for people who are themselves distressed. You see that distress and yet you have to remain calm because that's what leadership is all about. I mean, if you start quaking and if you start shaking and if you start falling apart, your people around you are going to fall apart too. So I believe that three things become important. One, the focus is not about you. In any difficult moment, if you take the focus on you, the person, and the impact it will have on your career or your reputation or whatever, I think you're, you're on a very, very slippery path. Because you'll start doing all the wrong things because the right things that influence your career will be the wrong things uh, that, could, that could get the organization or the group of people out of difficulty. The second is managing your emotions. I think managing your emotions, uh, some of us are born the way we are born uh, and we are calm by nature. I am I'm usually pretty calm by nature because one of the characteristics that I picked up from my mother very early in my life was never take yourself too seriously. Uh, she never took herself too seriously and she always used to laugh and joke. You know, even when she had cancer, uh, she was the only woman I know 
uh, who used to actually laugh about it, saying that, you know, uh, God has given this kind of gift to me. So, that uh, kind of feeling got into me as well. So, I think managing yourself and managing your emotions. And third, focus on consequential impact on people. You know, again, I, I quote my, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, uh, when I came back and went to seek her blessings during the Maggie crisis, I asked her, and she was an, you know, I think uh, a middle school educated uh, woman of the old days, fiercely independent, but also uh, fiercely committed to various causes. And she told me, she said, my only lesson to you in management, take care of your people. And they'll take and care of everything. They'll take care of everything. So I think, you know, these are simple lessons, but when we become so obsessed with who we are, what people think, you know, if I'm here to try and make an impact on you, I think I'm making a big mistake. You can see me through in, in two minutes, right? Saying, yeah, this guy is a bloody fake. You know, he's coming and telling us all about this, uh, these things. But actually, what he does in life is something that's totally different. So I think authenticity, transparency, mooring on a cause. You know, I was recently, a few days back, uh, visiting Akshay Patra in uh, Bangalore. I think one of the most fantastic organizations that I have witnessed in my life. They called me to talk about leadership. I said, how can I talk about leadership to people who are so evolved that you can teach the world? 2.2 million kids being fed every single day across 72 kitchens. Dirt poor kids fed nutritious food with absolute top class quality standards. You know, I head a food company. I know a thing or two about quality. The food served out of those, in those kitchens are the best hygienically that you'll find anywhere in the world. So I think if people, and it's, you don't work in Akshay Patra for making a career, you don't become vice president, senior vice president, director, and senior director. Uh, you don't even get salaries which are comparable to the corporate world. And yet you have people who have been partners in large accounting firms who are working at companies like Amazon and Lever and and, and various other places coming and doing it. So, purpose binds them together. I think it is that purpose and, and, and the job of leadership is only to point to purpose. All that I do all day, if I, you know, I pray to the God or one thing, let me not get into someone's way because it will be destructive to them. And secondly, remind them of who they are and what they represent. And I think if you keep doing that, uh, success happens, things follow, and and you remain happy. So clearly, your purpose is to be able to. You talk to a servant leadership. I read about it first time, 30 years back in a business school, and uh, it's true <coughs> today also, where you put people first, uh, and of course the organization, and the brand, and business will prosper. Now, what is Nestle's purpose in India? And how would you say Nestle India is doing on the purpose it has set it out? Look, I think uh, Nestle's purpose, which is unlocking the power of food to positively impact the quality of lives of the current generation and generations to come, is the word. But what is the thought behind it? The thought behind it was 165 years ago, when Henri Nestlé saved the life of a child. Switzerland was desperately poor, can't believe it, but it was. And he put together a combination of wheat flour, of milk, cereals, and gave it to Werner, a child who was dying. The child survived, and he gave it to more children. And end of it all, the person who was heading that uh, Canton or that village, I told him, you know, you need to run a business model because you'll go flat broke. I mean, as it is, you're a relatively modest a person of modest means. How long will you keep doing this? So he set up uh, a company in order to make 
this product for children. And he said the highest quality of milk, the highest quality of wheat, the highest quality of every ingredient that goes into making it is what I will use. That has become the, the life pattern of the organization in three ways. Number one, a focus on food quality and safety. Number two, a focus on partnerships. Uh, we are an agriculture-based company. So food quality and, and, and uh, networking into the agricultural partnerships is a key part of what we do. And third, creating positive impact on communities. You know, I'm very proud of the fact that as a company, I deal with more than 100,000 farmers. And these 100,000 farmers, we have dealt with them for the last 50, 60 years. Even during COVID, my only request to my team was collect every drop of milk that these farmers give you. And they're all farmers from the Punjab. Some of them call their house as Nestle House. But the reason why we did so was trust is at the center of what an organization stands for. If you walk away in difficult times, then I think you walked away from a relationship for good. So these are the three tenets of the organization which have got executed across brands, across businesses. Uh, today, for example, uh, in a brand like Nescafe, which is creating uh, uh, exciting moments in coffee, uh, we run a program called the Nescafe Plan, uh, working with about five, 6,000 uh, farmers in Kurg to produce sustainable coffee. Uh, we give them plantlets, which are of the best yield, the most resistance. And as a consequence, more than 60% of the coffee that we procure is sustainable coffee. So every time you drink a cup of Nescafe, be rest assured that it is sustainable coffee that you're drinking. And the farmer is paid between two and three rupees and 50 paise more to produce that sustainable coffee because he's sacrificing something to produce that coffee. Different ways of engaging brands, different ways of, of building purpose, but purpose has to be built into the brand and purpose has to be built into the operations. Only then will purpose be sustainable in the organization. It has to be core to the organization and part your, of the strategy. And your employees have to feel it. I mean, uh, when, my, when my people go and visit the Nescafe plan or when they visit uh, Moga to the farms, they have a deep sense of pride because they say, wow, this is what this company is doing. We don't talk about it. We don't, you know, you are giving me the opportunity today, I talk about it. But we don't take out, leave, you know, uh, advertisements and brochures and booklets uh, saying, you know, what a what an organization we are or what we are doing. Uh, we are sometimes, uh, I guess, a little too self-effacing. And therefore, we also get ourselves into trouble because of that. Because we are self-effacing, so somebody decides to, to, to give you a whack and we take that whack. Yeah, and you know, I don't know, I told you who I met yesterday morning before I flew to Bombay and he's a friend of yours and you met him in 2015 and you met him and another friend yeah. of his who was running the other company, two companies that matter uh, and you know, he was praising you and saying exactly the things uh, that you're talking about, both at a personal level and a professional level. Um, when I meet people like him to get some advice and wisdom, we really look up to them. But coming back to pur purpose, how do you measure that you are true to your purpose? For example, you talked about the Nescafe plan. <coughs> what has happened to the lives of the farmers? What has happened to the community? Is there a way you keep track or yeah. you're talking of these agriculture ecosystem in yeah. Punjab, in Moga? Yeah. What has happened to them? So are you able to measure, improve? We keep track of uh, the income levels and the improvements in prosperity uh, because we are in touch with them every day. So we know how their lives are improving. The farmers in Punjab, uh, you know that state very well. It's a state where honesty, integrity and trust uh, makes loyalty happen. We have stuck to farmers for 50, 60 years and they have stuck to us. It means something we must be doing right for them. Uh, today we are uh, investing in reducing the carbon footprint because 
cows generate methane, which is not good for the planet. So we are trying to do our best in terms of biodigesters. You see an improvement in their lives. They're getting a little bit of electrification of their of their homes. Uh, the uh, the fireplace is being now run with biogas. What would have been run with wood and other stuff, making it. I saw it in the E4M Do Good Awards. Uh, the entry and I saw the yes. uh, testimony of the farmers. Yes. I saw that video. Yes, yes. So I think, I think uh, we we measure this impact. The last one I would like to you know do is we constantly seek new purpose. I mean, uh, you in Bombay are a little bit insulated from uh, the forces of extreme pollution, but in Delhi we face enormous pollution. I'm very happy and extremely proud that in a few months' time we'll be commissioning a biomass boiler in Moga in the Punjab which will actually use stubble waste as briquettes in order to produce steam thereby about 7 to 10 percent of the emission the smoke emission is reduced will be reduced brilliant so I mean it's our little contribution I mean it won't suddenly make you uh, kind of oxygen dense but nevertheless it gives you a little bit better breathing than than what you would have done yesterday. So I think these are ways in which we believe that we not only uh, generate a positive momentum for business, but we generate a positive momentum for the organization. You know, my organization is 80% uh, millennials and Gen Z. I have one of the lowest attrition rates in all the industry. And people keep telling me, yeah, but this Gen Z will run away. I said, nobody runs away. Everyone wants to work for an organization that is decent, that has purpose, that has something going and does something for society and for the community. Brilliant. That's the job of leadership to do and that's what I'm paid to do. My last question before I bring in the audience. Again, you worked outside India, you worked in Asia, you worked in Europe, <coughs> you worked in the headquarters. You now again work back in India for nine plus years, you'll complete 10 years in a couple of months. What do you see around yourself in terms of organizations that have taken a higher purpose and has it shown it in their, uh, it has resulted in better shareholder returns uh, and how does it compare with what's happening across the world? In the morning I talked about two of the things that you talked about. I talked about ESG and sustainability, how that has become a part of every leader's uh, uh, raising the consciousness. There is Earthwise, which has, you know, uh, been launched by Anujita to be able to measure that. I talked about the fact about kindness in the morning, and I have been the recipient of your kindness, both at a personal and professional level. But tell us, where does India stand vis a vis, uh, where purpose driven organizations are also able to deliver better shareholder returns? and contribute to community at the same time? Look, I think, you know, uh, I can say study after study that I have read uh, on organizations that combine diversity, purpose and uh, sustainability as part of their goals and they follow it consistently over a period of time. They tend to give at least a couple of hundred basis points better on return on any financial parameter that you can think of. I mean, uh, I, I pride myself in an organization where half my board, I'm a listed company, half my board are women. 60% of the workforce in my newest factory in Sanand in Gujarat are women. 13 of the workers in that factory are disabled. They have either hearing impaired or motor impaired. All this makes an impact on the performance of the organization. People notice that here is an organization willing to stretch itself. I'm looking at now how I can get in more LGBTs into my organization. Who's going to take care of these people? I mean, if, if corporates walk away and say, look, it depends on some foundation to take care of it, uh, I think it's very sad. So as, as, as a leader, I think I have to have that sensitivity to see what best the organization can do. But on diversity, 
one of the principles that we have used very clearly is diversity is on merit. Diversity is not on quota. It's not on whether you wear a trouser or a skirt that you come into the company. You are worth it and therefore you are there. Because I think it's important for the woman to also feel that I am worth it and therefore I am in this organization, not because there's a stupid quota that says 50% have to be women. So I think there are enough reasons to make organizations. And if you look at it, uh, Anurag, you know better than me. I don't believe any organization has failed because of miserable strategy. By and large strategies, people know how to work out. If they don't know, they'll find people to work out. They collapse because of toxic leadership and toxic cultures. Look around you, the companies which have collapsed, high value companies, they collapse because the, 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 the leader thinks he is Nero of Rome or he can do anything to anybody in the organization. And this is how the unwinding starts. So the fundamental role of leadership is to get back some of the ethics and purpose into organizations. And in fact, when I talk to uh, business school heads, I keep telling them, you focus so much on strategy, so much on operations management, so much on AI, so much on digital, but this much on ethics and value systems, which is what will make the difference between an outstanding organization and a, pardon my use of the term, bullshit organization of the future. Thank you, Mr. Narayanan. Clearly, uh, he believes in what he is doing with conviction and that's what uh, really he brings to play every day at Nestle India and all the roles. Uh, we have the good pleasure of having him here. We could take one or two questions. Uh,